On today's episode of Luke's Bike, weight loss journey supremo, Ryan Berman. Ryan lost a ton of weight by changing his diet, adjusting his lifestyle, and giving himself a new lease of life triggered by a traumatic visit to a theme park. Let's go. Hello, welcome to my tandem. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm feeling very, very strange. Um, feeling strange? Yeah. I mean, when you said tandem, like two minutes ago, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Every time I, I speak to somebody about coming on me today, they go, yeah, yeah, it'd be a great idea. And then they, they get to it and they think, oh, oh, it is actually a tandem. And um, we're actually going to be riding it. So, so Ryan, known you for a few years now. Yes. And uh, and if you've been on a massive kind of journey over the last couple of years, and uh, how are you feeling now? Now, I feel somewhat invincible. Right? I, it's it's completely changed my life. This journey I've been on. Um, you know, I suffered with a lot, health-wise, uh, both mentally and physically. But um, you know, when I started this journey to lose the weight, I did it or mainly my health, just because I knew that uh, I needed to lose weight. I was suffering from back pain and um, my heart was given as well. I was 20, 21 years old and I was having trouble with my heart where I was losing pain wow. regularly. Um, back strain, knees, legs. Just that was enough to go, you know what, I need to change. I'm still young, I need to do something about it. My knees actually, the love that I have for my knees and make me feel like, you know what, actually I do want this myself. You know, walking into a slim world for the first time ever, having no idea what to expect, just knowing that I needed to lose, I just needed to lose my life. But, yeah, it transformed my life, I mean, the mentality, you know, I mean, all of that back pain, stress, with my own uh, physical body is it's gone. Just, just a couple of stone gone, and it was, it was like, yeah, I'm massive relief gone. You know, the mentality that was the biggest change, it was that, that love for life, sure. that I thought I'd never have and never deserve. So, deserve? That's uh, that's an interesting one. Why did you say that? Um, because I don't know. I just felt like I was I was all, I was blaming myself for everything. And, sure. And I was punishing myself. I mean, I ate for any and every reason. Um, I ate because I was bored. I ate because I was. Um, I enjoyed it. But the biggest thing was comfort. I was in that vicious cycle of eating because I was unhappy. And unhappy eating it was always a punishment and I knew I was doing it and I just couldn't stop. It felt like because of that I deserved to be happy. And would you say that that was something that was a constant from a youngish age or has that been was that where your head was at for, for years and years and years? I think subconsciously it was always kind of there. Yeah. I was always in pain. Um, I always I knew that I wasn't happy. I've always been obese. I've always been morbidly obese my entire life. So I've never known anything I want. My biggest fear, judgment. Ah. I was always afraid of what other people were thinking. I had voices in my head telling me, what's that person thinking? Why are they looking at me? Oh, this, that. And it was just, I couldn't, most of the time, I doubt anyone was actually thinking. My mind sure. would always go straight to, what are they thinking? What, well, what must they think? Yes, yeah, I guess if you're in that, in that place in your head, that's a natural thing, isn't it? Yeah, I made myself believe that I was unlovable. But uh, yeah, that moment, so yeah, I had the airplane and uh, put the extender on, and then they came over and they looked and they saw that it wasn't one of their own, and they called out and they said, oh, we need a pregnancy extension down here. Oh my god. But it wasn't until I went to Pig World, Portland Park, with yep. my family. Nice. I've never um, been. Is it nice? I'd love to go again. Now that I could actually go on the rides though. Have you not been back since? No, um, it was the rides. And I wanted to go on them, but I knew Ruby's young, she didn't understand. She's four or five years old, her birthday. She didn't understand. Why is Ryan not getting on the rides? Why are not on the rides? Um, and we went to go on one ride, and we were queuing for a good 40, 50 minutes. And the entire time I was stood in the queue, I was just, I was seeing people looking at me. Um, it goes back to that fear of the judgment, the judge of me. 
Yeah, we got on the ride, and the thing I'd been fearing the most was the thing that happened. And of course. There, it, 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 I wouldn't fit, and they tried pushing the, the lever down, and they got someone else, and they were both trying to push it down. And they, they just said, yeah, I'm really sorry, sir, but you're going to have to leave. It wasn't so much being refused, or even the people looking and laughing and staring as I walked out. It was that it really, really did start to get me thinking yeah. about the bigger picture, about Ruby and um, being able to give that love, be able to take the family out, and do all those kind of things. I couldn't even walk up the stairs without feeling like I was going to pass out. So I could like, do anything like that, or even like take, take my own daughter down to the beach to get around the ball. You know, those simple little things that. My entire life I've been a pessimist and I've always said, I can't do this, you can't change, you know, it's never going to work, you've done this to yourself. And it was at that moment that the light bulb switched and I actually had a shift in my mentality and said, you know what, I'm still young. Totally. It's going to be hard, but maybe I could actually do it. And, and that's been my drive throughout the entire journey. Um, the 18 months it took me to lose the 13 and a half stone and it was all because I want to find love and I want a family. I would always think back to Ruby. It was, it was my love for Ruby that's driven me to where, where I am today. Yeah. Why Slimming World? I know the answer to that, Brian. <laughs> but why Slimming World for you? Why not any of the others? Why not your own thing or calorie counting or, or, or what? Why Slimming World? Why, what made you join a group? Um, so, I mean, I tried simple little things on my own. Like, I was that stereotypical person that would look on Google and try and work out how to lose weight um, without doing any work. <laughs> it's easy, um, isn't it? And I looked up diet pills and all those kind of things. I never actually took any diet pills or anything like that, <laughs> but I always looked, um, just trying to find the easiest route. I used to buy magazines. Yeah? I used to buy Men's Health, because if you buy a Men's Health magazine, you're healthy, right? Oh, exactly. That's oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, it was after that moment where I was like, you know what, if, if this is the moment of Pepper Pig World where it kind of triggers, it's like, after then, it's like, okay, I know that I've tried things on my own, I've tried losing weight, but I was constantly depriving myself of the foods that I love, because I used to indulge in chocolate and bread. Okay. So what I'd do is i go, okay, I love chocolate and bread, that's what's made me big, so I can't have it anymore. Yeah. So I just cut it out completely, and I might last a week, two weeks, I mean, I did a month tops once. And then I just caved, and it was that. It's so that I difficult. myself yeah. all of the things that I love, and now I'm just even more miserable from it. So yep. what am I going to do? I'm going to have it all again, but I'm going to go crazy <laughs> and uh, end up worse <laughs> uh, from where I was when I started because I missed it that much. And I just overindulged massively. I knew that there was a slim world group about because my mum had been there when I was young, um, and I lived like a two-minute walk from the house. So I was like, you know what? I could walk. To it. <laughs> Um, it was nice and close and local, but um, I had no idea what to expect walking into a group. No idea at all. I was one of those people that walked out going, you know what, I don't believe it. Totally. I'm going to eat so much of this free food and come back and gain weight. I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. And it worked. Um, and it was just incredible. It was like at that moment, I just knew. It was, it was that moment I jumped up the scales for the very first um, week of weighing. I've been on it for a week. I thought, you know what, maybe I could actually do this. And then roll on, 18 months later, <laughs> 13 stone yes. and a half. <laughs> you know, it's been great to watch, if I'm honest with you, Ryan. I, I, you know, I caught on to your story, I guess, relatively towards the end of the yeah. uh, end of your journey. But, you know, it's been really interesting to see what you then do beyond. Because for me, um, these things are great if they actually change you yeah and it seems to have really done that for you um, it really has. so uh so yeah cringy aside well done i mean it's, <laughs> it's so good it's fantastic no, thank you it really does just, i just i just know how incredible i feel now yeah well um, yes and it's just if i can make even just one person i mean i tell people that my my career my aspiration in life is just to make one person smile every single day and then i'm happy that's no. But if I can change people's lives um, and get more of a smile out of people and actually have people feel as incredible as I do now and help people reach their own personal goals and dreams, 
because you know it wasn't just help. You know, people have goals and dreams with their family, with their lives, with their careers, and you know that weight loss gave me the confidence to believe that I could do better. Oh, how are you finding it? Oh, actually. <laughs> A bit different from the interviews you've uh, yeah. essentially done before. I like it, I like it. I mean, you get your body magic on as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Get this log. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much the camera can see, but I'm not actually There's a camera we I've got a product from the pound shop here, yep. uh, a legitimate one pound item. And um, all I want you to do, I want you to feel it, I want you to guess what it is. Okay. Easy, right? That's all you've got to do whilst well, blindfolded. Well, well, riding blindfolded. Whilst well, riding blindfolded. blindfolded. Yeah. yeah, I'll avoid the traffic. You just it's you good. just pick this item over my left shoulder, Ryan. You got it? Okay. Perfect, perfect. There you go. Right. Oh, oh, I know what this is. Oh, no. Oh. oh. I know what this is. You already know what it is. I've felt one of these before. I'm sure I have. Okay. Oh. What are you going for? It is. Um, oh, it's like a, it's one of those little handheld oven mitts. You usually get them. They look like dogs and cats and stuff. I mean, Ryan, this feature is meant to last a little bit longer than this. Absolutely. Um, can you just pretend just for a moment that you don't know what it is? Okay. <laughs> Ryan, what's the item? I don't know. The compliment to megaphone. You guys look beautiful! Have a great day! You have a beautiful branch! You've been giving me oxygen! Morning! You guys look gorgeous! <laughs> Driving home for Christmas! Do, 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 do. Merry Christmas! Morning! No hands! Oh, no hands! Oh. It's not much or no more! <laughs> This is where the magic happens! Pick up my baby Here she come now And that becomes as no surprise